Well, when folks ask me about some of my favorite songs of the Stanley Brothers, of Ralph Edmund and Carter Glenn Stanley, I go back to the early 1950s so many times when they first uh, started recording for Mercury Records in Nashville. And that song is one of my all-time favorites among their material, and I think it's one of their greatest duet performances. And uh, a fellow that knows so much about their music has joined us on the phone today from his home in southwestern Virginia, uh, just a half a dozen counties away from from the Stanley Brothers' home place. And he's been a friend of mine and a friend of the entire bluegrass world for 40-some years now as a record producer and biographer and writer and uh, historian, particular, particularly. And uh, he's he's got the most... Uh, most credibility among those among biographers who have documented the life and music of the Stanley Brothers, and we welcome to our broadcast my friend Gary Reed. Gary, good afternoon. Hello, Joe. How are you doing? Wonderful, wonderful, and uh, I'm thankful that I still have the privilege of featuring the Stanley Brothers' music to a, a wide audience here in southwestern Ohio and eastern Indiana with our radio network, and to a worldwide audience on the web. But uh, I'm not unique. The Stanley Brothers' music. Um, even 60 years later from the recording we just heard, still has such an impact. And folks don't oh, just like sure. it, they, they love it. And the Stanley music among the first generation of bluegrass artists, um, if, folks n- not who just make a living in radio or, or in recordings, but fans are so passionate about it worldwide. I wonder why. Well, uh I, I agree that I, I think that uh, they're more popular today than than they were during the the twenty years that they played together. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know they they just had uh, a unique sound about them that was uh, so uh, emotional uh, in their their singing and uh, and the, the instrumental backup that it was uh, just a unique sound that that resonates touches people's hearts. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I have to agree. It um, the 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 raw emotion, um, and the biographical nature of some of those songs, uh, that one there in particular. And I know so many of our audience members uh, may know the you know the Stanley Brothers had a, a tough start to their career, just like a lot of startup bands do in any genre, past or present. Sure. But the the Stanleys kind of starved out after uh, failing to have big success with their first recordings on Columbia Records. And they took they took a day job for Ford Motor Company in Detroit, and left their mountain home in southwestern Virginia, and wound up punching the clock at a factory like so many old boys have had to through the years. But yeah. they had so much music in their heart and soul uh, that it it was an experience that uh, that prompted a lot of great songwriting from Carter Stanley, and he wrote that one uh, when they were so far from home and wanting to be back in the hills. Wanted to be back in the recording studio too, and then yeah. they they got another opportunity after a, a brief respite from the music business. While in the manufacturing factory business, they got out of that and got back to Nashville. But <laughs> we're going to focus on Carter Stanley particularly just for a second because our friend Gary Reed, he's presented, uh, he's written and presented a new stage presentation called "A Life of Sorrow: The Life and Times of Carter Stanley." been making this presentation around the country at performing arts centers and libraries and theaters and so forth uh, for a year or so now and he's going to be on ohio this coming weekend up in akron on friday in columbus on saturday and in cincinnati on sunday uh with presentations on stage in a one-man biography uh, uh presentation that presents the life of carter stanley and uh, tell us who carter stanley was gary well, he was uh, an innovator, uh, somebody who was in on the ground floor of the uh, development of bluegrass music. Uh, of course, a lot of people credit Bill Monroe for, for being the originator of it, but uh, folks like Carter and Ralph Stanley uh, took the ball and ran with it and were among that, that first tier uh, first tier generation of bluegrass musicians who played the groundwork, they, they wrote the songs, they, they helped define the music, and uh, Carter was, uh, I guess, of the, uh, the two in the Stanley Brothers at the time, he was uh, kind of the, the driving force behind it. Uh, it was, uh, I think, his vision to, uh, to shape the music the way that they did, and he wrote a lot of the songs and did the MC work in front of the band, and uh, 
uh, he was just a real dynamic performer, very engaging with the, with the public, and just had a real personable uh, way in that he uh, he approached the public and uh, talking with them about the songs and the music and where it came from and everything. And uh, well, I, I, I agree with with everything, and I'm I'm thankful to you not only as a biographer but but as someone who has provided us with the most detailed um, recording discography of the Stanley Brothers. And through your uh, your record label, Copper Creek, and your association with other record labels and all of the music that the Stanleys recorded from the uh, very earliest part of their career in the 1940s up until Carter's passing in December of 66, um, you have made available more live recordings of the Stanley Brothers, which for a third generation performers and fans like myself – uh, who didn't have the privilege of seeing Carter Stanley at his best in the 1950s and early 60s, hearing those live recordings, man, he was a master, whether on radio with the Clinch Mountain yeah. Boys in a broadcast or on stage at a live concert or in special appearances at folk festivals or a, as a guest with Bill Monroe or Pete Seeger, Carter <laughs> Stanley. He really knew how to engage the audience and uh, the microphone or the camera in addition, in addition to writing songs and singing his heart out, he was really all the whole package, wasn't he? He really was. He uh, he was equally at home and in pretty much any situation, and then knew how to make the best of it. Well, it's uh, it's it's great that uh, that your years of studying and detailing and documenting the Stanley Brothers' music and lives and career and recording discography. Uh, has led to you being able to present a little bit of who he was in a live audience setting. And uh, do you do more picking and singing, or more talking, or is it an equal combination? Well, it's uh, mostly talking, but uh, there's about uh, portions of ten songs that I perform throughout the play that uh, that kind of speak to what he's talking about, where where some of his songs came from, and how he came to write them, and what the music meant to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we're speaking of music that has uh, gripped the hearts of uh, American music fans for decades now. Uh, and again, we're reminded the Stanley Brothers career, Ralph and Carter as a duo, was only 20 years long. And what an impact here decades later. Yeah. You'll learn a lot about it from Gary Reed, the foremost biographer on the life and times of Carter Stanley and the music of the Stanley Brothers. And uh, for our listening audience in southwestern Ohio, Saturday's performance at 7 p.m. at the Wild Goose Creative, Summit Street, Columbus, Ohio. Sunday um, at the MOTR Pub, Main Street, Cincinnati. Gary, give us a website, your website, I suppose, that will let our audience connect to those exact locations and times for this weekend's performances of of A Life of Sorrow, The Life and Times of Carter Stanley. You got a website? Well, the uh, easiest way for people to do would be to uh, track me down on Facebook. I have a page that's set up called A Life of Sorrow, The Life and Times of Carter Stanley. And if they uh, just key that in, it brings up all of the uh, the dates, show dates, where we'll be, and uh, the times and all of that, the locations. Wonderful. Well, then I mentioned the music of the Stanley Brothers, and uh, we were able to, here at our gift shop at our radio network, Start stocking a beautiful book uh, filled with photographs and um, detailed information about every performance and recording of the Stanley Brothers that you can find documentation on. And uh, the book is a, a treasure for bluegrass fans, particularly anyone that enjoys the Stanley music. Um, was it early last year you got the book finished up? Uh, it was released. Uh, they had copies available in December. 2014 last year so it's been out uh nine months roughly i guess but the music of the stanley brothers is a wonderful detailed biography and discography of uh, all of gary's documented recordings of the stanley brothers from early radio shows to live performances that help you chronicle their career if you're a lifelong fan like i am and like millions are um, Sunday afternoon, you're going to give a talk on on the book and on the Stanley Brothers' career. Give us details on that, Gary. Yeah, that's at the uh, the main uh, downtown library in Cincinnati. Uh, it starts at one thirty until three o'clock, and we'll be talking all about the music of the Stanley Brothers, uh, 
everything from the book and probably uh, some other details as well. And uh, hoping that uh, maybe there'll be some folks in the audience that maybe knew and saw uh, Carter and Ralph years ago. I, that's uh, one reason that I enjoy going out doing these things is uh, I, I read about a lot of their career and stuff, but I, I enjoy actually talking with people who, who knew them and getting that information firsthand from them. Yeah. Well, they were so popular in in Ohio, particularly, and uh, yeah. had a wonderful fan base in the Dayton, Cincinnati, and Columbus markets, and a huge chunk of their music was recorded in Cincinnati for King Recordings oh, yeah. from the late 50s up through the mid-60s. They were in and out of Cincinnati doing recordings, and subsequently, when they came to uh, this region to be at the recording studio in Cincinnati, uh, they wound up working every wide spot in the road, and <laughs> we're, we're, re- we're regulars at some of the uh, some of the beer taverns that featured bluegrass music. Some of the bluegrass honky tonks of Cincinnati and Middletown and Dayton uh, featured the Stanley Brothers often in the early 1960s. And uh, yeah. my, my dad's work as as a fiddle player a couple times with the group, and then as a broadcaster and concert presenter, uh, he he. Uh, he was with the Stanley Brothers so many times in the early 60s, presenting them after he had a strong wow. radio audience and uh, and helped uh, do shows. Uh, our family photo collection, we've got some pictures of of the Stanleys and a few that we've shared with you, um, yeah. with my dad with the Stanleys. And you, like likewise, have shared a few from Dad's days in the last part of 58 as a Clinch Mountain boy when they had moved from uh, Virginia down to Florida. And uh, the Stanleys' career is... Uh, it's, uh, when you say a life of sorrow, the life and times of Carter Stanley, uh, I know many of the longtime bluegrass fans from this area uh, that did see the Stanley Brothers uh, and did love their music and have continually loved it. Uh, they know that uh, Carter Stanley, uh, he didn't get to enjoy uh, many of the yeah. financial fruits of his labor, did he? No, he sure didn't. Uh... I think he was pretty much broke uh, when he passed away, and uh, it was only after the festival uh, phenomenon came about in the late 60s and early 70s that Ralph uh, began to, to realize some of the uh, the fruits of their work. It is, uh, it is a, a tragic tale uh, when you look at the body of work that Carter Stanley produced as a songwriter. Um, yeah, and then to, as you said, uh, to pass away as a pauper at, at a young age, um, it is it's quite a, tra- a tragic story. Uh, but yeah. we're so thankful for that music, and I'm thankful, and I thank Ralph each time we get to visit for his perseverance. Man, yeah. Ralph, Ralph gritted his teeth and got back on the road in February of '67, and uh, you, you, it's not as easy as saying, and the rest is history. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ralph had to keep his teeth gritted and, and sit behind the steering wheel of a station wagon or a motor home or a tour bus for millions of miles before he, yeah. too, before he finally could enjoy uh, yeah. the recognition and the success as an American music icon that finally came in the 1990s and that his family's been able to enjoy the last couple of decades. But so much of that is covered in uh, the Stanley Brothers uh, biography. And, uh, and, in, and in Gary Reed's onstage presentation of the life and times of Carter Stanley, follow Gary on Facebook. Or if you need details, I can give you addresses and, and presentation times for the uh, material that we've covered today. If you call me here in the radio studio, uh, we'll probably have links posted at, at Classic Country Radio's Facebook site as well. And Gary's got a beautiful resume that makes him certainly qualified uh, to talk to any audience about any aspect of the career and the life and the music of the Stanley Brothers. Um, Gary Reed, thank you for what you do I, as a well, lifelong fan. I, I, well, I'm grateful that, that we've got uh, you as a resource and all that you provided to Bluegrass on uh, the Stanley Brothers. Anything else we need to cover? Well, I think you've uh, pretty much covered it all. Mm-hmm. I uh, uh, would like to uh, reciprocate and thank you for your efforts that... Uh, you've done with the music over the years it's a fine job uh playing some great music of your own but uh, keeping uh, the music of all the other people going throughout your part of ohio there well i'm grateful thankful for our radio reach and and the radio ramblers whether we do a, an old-time song or something new we try to entertain and educate an audience and i'm i'm as a, a board member of our professional association uh, and uh, as a um an advocate and a sponsor and a spokesperson for our International Bluegrass Music Museum and our Hall of Fame. 
Um, I certainly want folks to know about the music of the Stainer Brothers, just as you do. And thanks for helping keep it all alive and keep it going. So, Gary Reed, the foremost biographer on the Stainer Brothers music in Ohio this weekend. You follow Gary on Facebook or check our Facebook page or uh, give me a call. I'll give you details. You don't want to miss his presentations, particularly in Columbus and Cincinnati this Saturday and Sunday. We're going to wrap up our time with another favorite of the Stanley Brothers. And Gary, I, I think I know the answer to the question, and you can tell. You, but I know you, you do know the answer to the question. Uh, the first song they recorded after they had to, after the, after they, they escaped factory work and went back to Nashville in the last part of 1953 for Mercury Records. That time period was one of the most productive and prosperous before rock and roll ate their lunch. And, yeah. and I love the sound that the Stanley's got at Mercury Recordings uh, at the studios in Nashville. Well, that's the first song they recorded when they got back to Nashville in 1953 with Art Stamper on the fiddle. Well, they did four songs, uh, Our Last Goodbye, uh, I'm uh, Lonesome Without You, This Weary Heart You Stole Away, and... Uh, one other one that escapes me at the, the moment. One that, that fourth but, one's the one I was wanting you to tell me. It's <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's "Say Won't You Be Mine." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the very first one. That's uh, it. That that was the first one, and and uh, and I didn't realize you know the exact sequence and that they those first four were done probably until Bear Family started helping go back and dig out all that information from the recording studios. But you brought it out plainly in your book, and Ralph did in his book too about the yeah. energy and excitement of that first recording session when they got uh, back in business in the fall of 1953. And I think you hear it on this, and you hear it also in Carter's uh, songwriting here. Um, yeah. yeah uh, uh, meet, uh, um, un underneath that lonesome pine. The trail of the lonesome pine still runs through Dickinson County, Virginia, where the yeah. Stanley brothers were from. And uh, this, this song is, again, one of the great classic recordings of all time in bluegrass music. And one more time on Classic Country Radio, here are the Stanley Brothers.